Namaste everyone. The second BNB Knee course is scheduled for 28 and 29 July 2017. With the experience of first BNB Knee course, we have realized that there will be professionals with different knowledge level and the different skills of arthroscopy. If you see our statistics, there will be few residents, there will be some orthopedic surgeon with less than five years of experience and there will be some with more than five years of experience. So heterogeneous group of population. If you see the skill stations, so people have applied for different skill stations with different knowledge and different skill. So the aim of this pre-course module was to learn together and to deliver some information to all the participants about the course material which will be beneficial for them to understand the, the lecture which has given been by the faculties and when they come to the course they have some degree of knowledge. So the first step towards this is my presentation on meniscus which it challenges in diagnosing the meniscal injuries. So I am Dr. Amit Joshi and my moderator will be Dr. Sudip Baidya and be not surgeon. Various literature have mentioned various incidence rate of meniscal tear. The meniscal tear incidence is about 0.43% of whole population. It was found to be significantly higher in military population. It's, it is said to be associated with injuries in 15 to 50% and over 65 years of age cadavers, the incidence of meniscal tear was about 60%. As far as the meniscal tear with ACL injury is concerned, it is very high and overall it is said to be around 80%. So it is said to occur, the meniscal tear is said to be occur in 72% of acute ACL tear and in around 85% in chronic ACL tears. Diagnosis of meniscal tear as per, per our standard teaching is basically by a detailed history, a good clinical examination and MRI. Arthroscopy once considered as a diagnostic tool is no more is a diagnostic tool. Actually, this has become a therapeutic device. As far as the history is concerned, uh, in case of meniscal tear, about 80% uh, patient, they report history of trauma or they give some history of trauma. 47% uh, give history of next day swelling and clicking, which is associated with pain, is present in about 57% of the patients who have meniscal tears. If you look at the clinical test, you will find out more than 150 clinical tests which has been described for meniscal tear, which itself says that none of the test is very fruitful. The time tested tests are a place grinding test, McMurray's test and Thessaly test and these tests are most commonly used by the arthroscopic surgeon, by the sports injury surgeon. And my favorite test is the Apley's grinding and the McMurray's test. Uh, uh, I would like to demonstrate the Apley's grinding test in very slow motion. You see that the patient is prone. Then I gradually compress the leg into the thigh and do internal and external rotation and take it from flexion to extension and from extension to flexion. So what I'm doing here again to explain that with the, both the hands one in heel one in foot giving compression and then using both the hands I'm doing internal and external rotation and gradually extending the knee from flexion to extension. And here we have to feel the click 
also sometime the patient will give the pain at the same time when the click occurs. My favorite test is actually the McMurray's test and this McMurray's test has been described differently in different literature. The prerequisite for McMurray's test is full flexion of the knee joint. So I completely flex the knee joint, put my finger into the joint line and do some rotational movement. And to test the lateral meniscus, I do internal rotation of the foot. So if you put your hand underneath the foot, it's very easy to internal rotate. Then I give a virus stress and extend the knee gradually. So again repeating, rotational movement, putting my finger into the joint line, internally rotate and give virus and gradually extend and look at the patient when he complains of pain and with your finger feel the, feel the click. For uh, medial meniscus, we have to externally rotate the leg, again do the same rotational movement and here we have to give a valgus test. We have to open the joint so that the, the torn fragment gets trapped in between the joint and it produces click as well as pain. Just the final rotational force, external rotation, valgus and extension. Thessaly tests are very popular nowadays and it is also co called as active McMurray's test. So in Thessaly test what patient does, first we do in the normal leg, he stands in one leg and then he flexes his knee for about 20 to 25 degree. We hold into the waist and do rotational movement. So this way the meniscal injury or the meniscal tear will be trapped between the femoral and the tibial condyle and the patient will feel pain. Once it is done on the normal leg, then it is repeated on the injured knee. He stands on the injured knee, flexes his knee for 20 to 25 degrees, holding it to the waist, do rotational movement and feel and ask for the pain. These tests are very simple, easy to perform, which will uh, teach you during your skill stations. But if you see the sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value and the negative predictive value, these are not very encouraging. As far as the accuracy is concerned, the accuracy of all these three tests were around 60%. So accuracy of Thessaly McMurray's and the Apple's test is around only 60%. So what should we do now? The history is not very significant in all the patients and the tests are sensitive only in 60% of our cases. So most of us then we rely on MRI scan. But if you go to literature you will find out that the sensitivity specificity of MRI is also very low and the accuracy ranges between 73% for medial meniscus and about 78% for lateral meniscus. But these are studies in the developed country. This is another study uh, showing the sensitivity and the specificity of medial meniscus and the lateral meniscus. The accuracy hovers somewhere between 63 to 85 percent. Also very important to notice that the, the clinical and the MRI sensitivity or the accuracy are almost the same. That is the reason why many people debate either we need to do an MRI to diagnose the meniscal tear. So the problem is dependent when we know that uh, we do not have the musculoskeletal radiologist, the MRI are poor in resolution and we all have experienced problem with the meniscal reporting. So at the end of the day what we need is the appropriate treatment and for appropriate treatment we need appropriate diagnosis.
So what we can do to improve our diagnostic skill is to take adequate history and understand the history very adequately, doing a good clinical examination and the reading MRI ourselves. So we have challenges in diagnosing meniscal tear because history, clinical test and MRI, they are not reliable in our context. It has to be combination of all history, clinical examination and the MRI. Reading MRI ourselves as we know the history best and have examined personally, it's better to read ourselves. Never read the MRI report first. This will mislead you. Thank you very much for patient listening. This ends my presentation. I'd like to welcome you all in the second BNBNE course. Now you can prepare your question and be ready with the question for the discussion on 21st of June between 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Looking forward to see you all and answer and the discuss various issue with the moderators, Dr. Sudip Baidya and Binod Sarchar. Thank you very much.